And, uh, and um, so now here I am trying to preserve my own life. All right, I'm working and in the industry that I'm in, I was going to work every single week all over the country flying and I would generate thousands and thousands of thousands of dollars and I could not ever collect the paycheck. For the longest time, I was never getting paid. It just seemed like magically and mysteriously when it was time for me to be paid for the work I did, there was never a paycheck. Matter of fact, when I got delivered and came into uh, starting the business that the Lord gave us to start, I was owed fifty thousand dollars. Wow! That's how much had been stolen from me. Now, what am I at that point? A believer that's trying to save his own life, trying to preserve his own life. That makes sense. Now, look what happens to the believer that does that. Does that? Whoever will save his life shall what? Lose Click on lose. Now, we're talking about the believer, right? Right. Wait a minute. I hear you, Lord. I missed that. There are two more things that are left out of this equation of saving your own life. This is also the believer that tries to have a good life and prosper without the word. Spending time in the word. And without prayer. Wow. Are you still here or have you gone home? Still here. Hey, you wouldn't believe I'm preaching this to Christians all over the place right now. I mean, this comes up practically every single week, almost daily. This is the number one topic right now in the body of Christ. Trying to preserve, because what am I telling myself? When I don't tithe, when I don't pray, when I don't get in the word, I'm telling myself it's not necessary. Right. I can still do good. Yeah, I can still be all right without this. Yeah. I'm good. I don't need to come to church. I'm good. Wow. As long as I go every now and then and get my crack fix on Sunday, I'm good. And they work it either. You're trying to save your life, but look what happens. The text says, the one that does those things, he will lose his life. Now, religion has preached this as though this is a reference to after you die and go to heaven. But this has a twofold meaning. Don't miss this. Boy, I really want Chelsea to hear this. This is... She's going to have to preach this at some time. Otherwise, I'm going to have to preach it to her later on. Glory to God. <laughs> now, watch this. To lose his life, translated here by definition, means to destroy his life. Wow. Yes, it is possible for the born again believer to destroy his life. Now, watch this. I'm going to demonstrate this. Come here, Deese. Come here. This is prayer. Am I, are we in the camera? That's prayer. Come here. Come here, sis. Come here, Christian. Stand right here. This is the word. This is not being in the word. No prayer. No word. Come, come here. Come here a little bit. Come here, nephew. Yeah, take the mug off. Come on, come on. Be nice. You ain't gonna swing on this issue. See, this is what happened. You don't do the word, you be looking just like this. <laughs> this is, scoot over just a little bit. This is. I don't need to go to church. Not coming to church. Where's Aubrey? 
I'm gonna let you sit this time, Jai. You wanna be still. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z here. This is no tithing, no sowing, in faith, I might add. No prayer, no word, no church, no tithing and sowing. This represents the Christian that is trying to save his own life. Preserve his own life. Now, for the believer that does this, this is what will happen. Ladies and gentlemen, please don't miss this. This happens to the believer after you get saved. Watch this. He will destroy his life. Meaning, to put out of the way entirely, to abolish, to put an end to, watch this word, ruin. This believer will cause ruin in his or her life if they do this. Render useless. Wait a minute. This is why there's no fruit. This is why miracles don't happen. You could be begging, but I don't know why it's going This is, you're preserving your own life and you are becoming useless. Wow. Wow. To kill, it can lead to death. Keep scrolling. Keep, is that the end one? Keep going. To lose. Now, there's a portion of this that does have to do with the next life. But I want to be very clear first that neglecting to do the things that are necessary while you're on earth as a believer, for an example, Praying consistently. Yeah. Being in the word consistently. Wow. Coming to church consistently. And which one are you? Tithing and sowing consistently can cause you to destroy your life. It's a penalty that wouldn't have exactly worked out the same had you never been born again. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Look at that pause for effect. Wow. Man. It's something you'd have been better off, baby, <laughs> if you never came into the kingdom yeah. than to come over here and do this. Do you know how many believers are doing this? Absolutely. Is it crazy? Okay. Now, watch, watch this. Watch this. this, this, this. Uh, hey, uh, my brother or my sister, hey, um, are, are, you, are you praying? <laughs> man, I ain't really got time, man. I got things to do. Or, this is the part they don't say. I don't really feel like praying, and I'm tired of you church people putting pressure on me to pray. Wow. That's what they really feel. Yeah, that's right. I'm telling you. That's true. Ooh, there's a bigger one. Says the trade is a bigger one. Watch this. Hey, how is your word intake being? Nah, oh, that hits all of us. <laughs> At times, yeah. I've been here. Yeah. I bow. Yeah. Oh my. Oh my. Duck. Yeah. You got to bob and weave on this one now. I'm telling you, you got to bob to the left. You got to do to the left, then back to the right. <laughs> then come up the middle is what you're going to have to do to navigate this one, right? 
Hey, my sister, this question strikes fear in the heart of the average believer. Man. This area right here. Yeah, the word. The average believer, guys, the majority of all Christians do not spend time in the word. Yeah. The majority of all Christians do not spend time in the word. That's why the word of faith is different. Yeah. Because faith living won't work without the word. That's so true. Without faith in it. Yeah. Faith cometh by hearing. hearing and hearing what? By the, by the word. No hearing, no faith. No faith, no victory. Yep. That's good. No victory financially. No victory soulishly. Right. I'm not happy like I should be. Right. Or I'm not full of joy, rather. Right. No healing. No financial prosperity. You'd have been better off <laughs> hustling selling drugs, robbing in the world to get money than coming over in the body of Christ and not spending time in the word trying to prosper financially. Not praying, thinking that all things will be well with you. The Bible says men are to always pray and never faint. That means the believer should never Ever, 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 ever stop praying. Amen. You don't take seasons off from prayer. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I receive. Sister Angela prophetically came here and said, if you fail, it's going to be connected to no prayer, no word, or the words you're speaking, and no tithing and sowing. It's a big one. Yeah. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> hey, my brother. Hey, I ain't seen you in, the chur in church in a while, man. Where you been, bro? Where you been, man? I ain't seen you. Where you been at? <laughs> this is the part they won't say. <laughs> man, they, I've been watching you on the, on the thing. On the thing, yeah. Man, I watch you every day. All right, just talk about, I'm just saying, this more than one, more than two, guys. Man, ain't nobody got to come to church all the time. What's wrong with y'all? You know it's 2022. Yeah. Not be in church all the time. Yeah. Get tired after work, man. Yeah. Coming out to just, man, man, <laughs> Dang, you stay in church too long anyway. Every time you turn around, we got, can't get out of there. Be starving by the time we come out. I almost need to bring a lunch to church. <laughs> hey. is this, am, am, I, am I in the house? Is, is this real? Is this what's going on? Man, I got to work. I got bills to pay. I got time to come to church. You know what time I got off work this morning? I'm tired. I'll be there, but I'm going to be asleep. Yeah. How I feel about that? Tell she used to like when I talk like that when we were dating. She used to like, she's acting like she liked it. She liked it. She liked it, Aubrey. She liked it. No. No. She was always trying to get me to change my ebonics. Now, tithing. Hey. That thing that you're believing for, uh, have you sold the seed? Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Have you tithed? I don't even think we're supposed to tithe anymore. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, that's that's right. something in the Old Testament. We ain't, I don't buy do all that old tithe. Young preachers always try to get somebody's money. Right, right, right. You got a seed in the ground for that? Well, I, I, I've given before. <laughs> Now, what happens when you do this? You will, at some point, your life will start to decline. The symptoms start in spiritual order. The 
scripture says, I would that you increase or prosper in direct proportion to your soul, mind, will, and emotions. The first area of decline in the believer that is neglecting the word, prayer, coming to church, tithing, and sowing is in his mind, will, and emotions. Sadness, depression, withdrawing, lethargic, aggression, words will all start to contradict a life of abundance, of joy and peace. What are we saying? Folks, don't try to, not over here. You can't do that out here. <laughs> you know, I remember when, you know, I grew, I, I would hang out in multiple different projects. And when I would go into certain projects, or when people would come and be like, bro, I don't know what you do over there, but you can't do that out here, bro. We're going to get you. you. Come out here. You come out here wearing all the chains, we're going to get you over here. If you ain't from here, we're going to get you. In the kingdom of God, you are no match for the devil without cooperating with God. You, he cannot be defeated, guys, without it. I'm telling you. You may not take an L today. You may not take a loss tomorrow, but you will. Eventually, you're going down. Now, why am I so passionate about this? Go back to the verse for me, please, Victor. This is what happened to me. It started right here. Wow. I stopped praying. A pastor, and I stopped praying. Wow. I stopped the word. My finances started to take a huge hit. No matter what I did, they got worse and worse. Couldn't even really provide for my family. I stopped giving and tithing because the income completely stopped practically. Eventually, I stopped coming to church. I remember getting in the car, had old Cadillac, and I made this logical decision when I bought some marijuana, rolled it up, and said, I'm going to drive down here to the headquarters meet with the overseer of the denomination in which I was ordained as a pastor and I'm going to tell the overseer who loves me to this day still loves me and I love her and we don't always see eye to eye but that's because we have sort of the same temperament we, we, we both know that you know, we, we talk about it and I said I'm going to have this conversation and I'm going to withdraw. I'm going to resign. And after I resign, I'm going to hit the world full-fledged. Okay. Went down, had the conversation with her, and I cried like a baby. Mm. And I quit. And I left, got back in the car, turned on my preachers. You know who my preachers were, don't you? Rap, Rap music. Maybe for you, it's Billie Eilish. Maybe it's Beyonce. Maybe it's Taylor Swift. Maybe it's, you know, uh, country music. Which there's, what's that one country? Chris Stapleton? Well, that boy is sing now, I'll tell you. <laughs> Chelsea and I were invited to the CMA Awards because Chelsea was always doing some kind of modeling thing that that was trying to get her into entertainment really, really tough. And she got chosen. and then she, uh, they asked her to go find somebody else that would work in this, and they picked me. She picked me, and we got there, and I got to hear Chris Stapleton sing and, and uh, Shania Twain and everybody. And Arsenio Hall was on stage. <laughs> I'm just telling the story, just let me keep going. It's like, oh my God, what I was about to say. And he was walking on stage. Chelsea and I were the only black people in practically the entire building. <laughs> and we're walking, and I'm in the, we're in the box. This is on TV and everything. What year was this? 
You can go back and watch this and see Chelsea and I on there if you could find this video. And he walks up and he looks up in the box and looks at me and said, what are you doing here? I said, what are you doing here? <laughs> He's just laughing like. And whatever it is, whatever your, whatever your natural self is drawn to, that's what you typically will go back into. Wow. You see? Because it's logical for you. Wow. It's comfortable. It's your norm. Yeah. You know, if you are a prostitute, you're likely going back to prostitution. If you are a gangster, you're going to try to be a gangster again. Probably not going to work. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If you are just a depressed worry wart, you're going back to that. Yeah. Right? Now, you guys can have your seats. Thank you so much. Let's give them a hand, guys. Yeah. Whoever shall save his life shall lose it. Now watch this. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Now, who is this? What does that represent? The one who is losing his life is the one that has given up the logical way of living and traded it for God's way of living. This is the person that prays. Yeah. This is the person that spends time in the word. This is the person that comes to church. This is the person that ties and sows seed. Look at the wonderful promise here. If you do those things, you will find life. You will find life. That same life is that Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. This is how you get abundant life. This is where your needs are met. This is where you enjoy life. You got to choose to enjoy life. You got to choose it, glory be to God. Does it, is it initially comfortable? No, but somewhat. You get through that just like that. You ever tried, you ever took a break from the word, and then when you get back in it, you're like, oh my God. Oh, glory, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. You know, your spirit's starving. Yeah. You ever took off prayer, Stop. you, you stopped Listening to the word and stop praying, feel like you're going crazy. It only take about seven, eight days, you razzle dazzle. You don't know what's real and what's not. Next thing you know, you're on TikTok trying to reinvent yourself. You're too old now. You can't be cool no more. You're going to have to find a different swag because your time has passed. You see? Where are you going to? Weirdo land. Weirdo land. That's where you got to live, weirdo land. What will take you over to weirdo land? Stop praying. Stop the word. Stop coming to church. Stop tithing and sowing. In every case of believers, any believer that stops doing those things cannot be strong in the Lord. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what they say. You cannot sustain a healthy Life in the Lord. The scripture says it will be destroyed. Now, if you do this, you'll find it. Glory be to God. This is when, <laughs> ooh, this baby just want to run. This is when you set out looking to just get, you know, uh, you know, $6,000 a month to pay your bills. And the very thought of making six grand a month to, and, and, you know, making that and paying your bills was just exciting. And you ended up, instead of 60 grand a month, you end up seeing somewhere like 70, 80 grand a month. Amen. Amen. This is when, the, you know, you were just looking for just a car that would work. And then you end up in, you know, this you know, a raggedy old Lexus or something like that. You, you see? This is where you, you end up in a place to where instead of 
slaving and working for somebody else, uh -huh. you end up working for yourself. Glory be to God. You see? Yeah. This is when instead of just surviving in that apartment, uh -huh. the Lord takes you to the house on top of the hill. Glory be to God. Amen. This is where the job takes you from $10 an hour to $18 an hour. You see what I mean? Yep. This is when you get up in the morning and there's no fear. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You get up, whoo, glory be to God, good things are happening to me. Yeah. Boy, I tell you what, I'm about to run into favor today. Yeah. The glory of God is on me. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is where you get confidence to go out and actually preach to somebody. Uh, yeah, just somebody say. Let me tell you about the blessing of the Lord. See? When you neglect these things, you don't have the confidence to share the gospel with anybody. That's right. Because you're, you're in sort of a dejected place. You're in survival mode. You ain't going to dare open your mouth and preach the gospel to somebody else. Because there ain't nothing moving around in there. Wow. That confidence isn't there. Because you've been saving your own life. No, you should be full of joy. You should always be prepared to give an answer to the blessed hope that is within you. You should be a raving, crazy, lunatic, prosperity declaring, God saving, God healing believer running around everywhere you go. That's right. That's right. If you go in an environment that you can't talk about the gospel in, you need to recharge. You need to recharge. If the very thought of mentioning the gospel or identifying with Christianity in the environment that you're in becomes consistent, that is something you should be concerned about. I've been there. I've gone into places to um, barbershops and family members used to barber shops and family members and I've gone to hang out with family members that are so familiar and so carnival carnal that there is no anointing or unction anywhere in me wow. it's like I'm like almost like just scared shivering and the Lord said, Al, there ain't no anointing there. Get away from them people, family or not. Then I get away from what that anointing just jump right back on you. Glory be to God. Let me tell you how good the Lord is. Yeah. Good. You see that? Yeah. Go in a barbershop. The barbershop's so carnal. Marijuana everywhere. I feel like you need to get saved all over again. Just being in there. Don't be taking your kids to them barbershops. Yeah. Where they're in there playing music, right. talking about there, they're cussing, talking about women and kill Bill all on the TV. What are you doing? Right. You're not supposed to be there. Right. The kid, go get another haircut somewhere else. Learn to cut your own hair if you got to. You can't be in that environment consistently. Yeah. If you go in there, the Lord needs to have sent you there. Yeah. You need to be working on something. I tell you, my barber, I'm working on him. I'm working on I'm sowing the seed every time I go in there. And you know how I'm doing it? Because I'm demonstrating the gospel. Yeah. You know, those, the street guys, they notice natural things first. Like, boy, so is a nice jacket. Mm. I like them shoes. Pastor, where you get that chain from? Yeah, my wife bought that for me. <laughs> Good the Lord. Glory to God. Godly women. Boy. That's a nice car. Yeah. Oh, hey, Pastor, you don't do no cussing. Yeah. None? Yeah. <laughs> you do no smoking? No none? None of that? Get yourself out of here. What you say? You see, yep. the gospel is being preached when it's being demonstrated. That's right. Wow, you have what? You got that? You got what? See, the word is working for you. What's happening? Your life, you found it. Wow. You see that? You found it. Yeah. Why? Because you're not neglecting 
you're not going to neglect these necessities. That's good. Now, let me show you this and I'll close. Keep good. scrolling. Thank you, Lord. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world? And I guarantee you don't know where I'm going with this one. Do you see it yet? Do you see it? Let me ask you this. Who is the man that has profited the whole world? The one that lost his soul, right? Yeah. Or the one that tried to preserve his own life. Sure. That's the man that gained the whole world. No, it's not. No, it's not. The logical thinker? That's the one. The logical thinker is the one that tried to save his own soul. That's the guy that neglected prayer. That's the guy that neglected the word. That neglected coming to church. Neglected tithing and sowing seed. What kind of world is he is he gaining? The wages of that kind of lifestyle and sin is what? Death. He's not prospering. The one that profits the whole world, the one that profits is the one who has found oh, his life. He loses his soul. Get it. He yeah. found his life. He loses his logic. His now, as a result, watch this. I'm going to do like Bill Winston said. I'm going to preach this. Yeah, I just heard I'm going to preach this. Yeah, watch this. Watch. He, and that's for the sake of the anointing. Sometimes the spirit is it's, it's, you got to really focus to get where the Spirit is saying go next. The man who has profited the whole world is the man of God who lost his life. And now he is in danger if he neglects so great a salvation of losing his what? The soul. Losing his what? His mind, will, and emotions. When you do this, you will lose your mind, believe me. Wow. So, We're not talking about going to hell right here. Right. We're not there yet. We're not talking about, let me be clear. Let me restate this so you get it. And here's the key to studying right here. Read scripture in light of other scripture. Right. Don't isolate the verse. It goes with the same subject he's been in. It Has he not been explaining to us right here that if you try to save yourself, you're going to lose yourself? So by proxy, hey, if you have gained the whole world, you don't want to lose your soul by neglecting uh, the, thing. the things that are necessary for you to profit. Can we agree, glory be to God, when you have done the word, when you're praying, and you're in that word, and you're declaring that word, and you're consistent in church amongst fellowship of the believers, and you're tithing, and you're sowing, and you're forgiving, and you're standing, what happened? What's going to happen? You're going to prosper, glory be to God. You are going to increase. It's going to feel like you got the whole world. I know that's how I be feeling. Yeah, that's true. Like I've gained. Yeah. You don't do that and lose. You gain. Right. Now, look what it says right here. And lose his own soul. Watch this. And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Do you see it? Do you see it? Why would you risk losing your soul? By trying to save your own life. By trying to neglect wow. the necessities. Why would you risk losing your own soul? Now again, folks, I know this is a little heavier. This is not in reference to you going to hell. Right, I see. That's not what this is about. Jesus is talking to disciples 
Salvation is eternal. It's not talking about if you're going to lose your soul, you're going to lose your spirit too and your body if you're going to hell because hell was cast into the lake. Are you with me? Right. That's not what he's talking about. How do you conclude that? You read scripture in light of other scripture. If you take that position, you're going to need to find two or three other witnesses around the word of God that cooperate that and you can't find it. No. Yeah. Now watch. How? Look what's happening where this soul is concerned. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Keep scrolling. Wow. Now, watch this. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father. He's going to come in the presence of his Father with his angels. And watch this. Then he shall reward. Now, scripturally, you Bible scholars, when do reward, when are rewards given out to believers scripturally? Does anybody know? I'll wait for a second for this answer. When are what when is it? When will rewards, I'm talking about specific rewards right. where Jesus and the angels are there. When Jesus and the angels come. When is Jesus and the angels coming in the glory of the Father the to the earth? What is this? After the rapture. In the rapture. Right. Listen, rapture is reward time. When the rapture takes place, rewards are then determined. What's happening here? In all three of the Gospels right here, Jesus points this out. Do you have up the other two there, Victor? You already got them up or not? I need to show you this. Scroll down. Right there, go back up, go back up. This verse, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Now let's read this verse. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my what? Words. Words. What's the problem here? Ashamed is the idea of disappointment as a result of neglect. Right. He's talking about the person who has neglected the word of God. That's how you lose your soul when you neglect the word. That's true. Now, what about this? Whosoever, who therefore, whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, which is when? While you're living right now, right? What about it? Also, of him also shall the son of man be ashamed or will suffer loss or will be disappointed when? When he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. So watch this. Go to the third one there. Go to the other one in Mark, I believe it is. When, in Luke, wherever it is, when this life is over, you and I have to stand before the Lord as believers and give an account for what you've done while you're here. And there is going to be a legitimate, specific, decisive tally based off of, watch this, your performance while you were here in the earth. If you have neglected and chose to preserve your own life and neglected the kingdom way of living. If you've chose logical living over God's right way of doing things, you're going to pay for it while you're in this earth. And you're going to pay for it when you stand before the Lord. We all are. I am, const I am consistently aware from the very beginning. 
I am intending to get my rewards. You should too. You know, in religion, you would think, well, just make it all out. They would see this. Yeah. They would get up and testify. Honey, if I could just make it in. If I'm just a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. No, 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 no. That's not what you should be after. You want to get to heaven and get everything you have coming to you. Some religious organizations, you'll make it to heaven, but that's it. You won't get nothing else. What rewards you receive at this time will be the, war, the rewards or the condition of living that you're going to be subjected to for eternity. I mean, it's going to be big. There are going to be cities given out. There are going to be countries given out to believers. There are going to be planets given to believers. There are going to be real houses, mansions. I mean, you can't even fathom all the very real, tangible things that you stand to enjoy and benefit from after you get there. And it's all connected to what you've done here. So you need this testimony to say what Paul said. I fought a good fight. I have what? Kept the faith. And guess what? I finished my course. Therefore, I know there is a crown a reward of righteousness laid up for me. How about you? You need to be able to lay down with that kind of conscience. You need to be able to lay down and say, Lord, I'm in the press. I'm in the press. You know, they used to ask you that. The old saints used to be, hey, praise the good Lord. How you doing? I'm in the press. Glory be to God. When they said that, you knew they were pressing privately. You knew you were talking to somebody that was praying privately, that was spending time in the word privately, that was practicing the word, that wasn't just hearing the word, they were doing the word, yes. that the word was working for them, glory be to God. You felt safe when you were around those kind of people. When, they're not, when the believer's not doing that, they're not safe. That's true. Spirit get the, gets agitated when you're around unclean believers. Believer needs to be clean, needs to be healthy. Did I say perfect? No, but in the press. You need to be in the press. You need to be always what? Abounding. Going higher and higher. You need to be going from faith to what? Faith. Your faith needs to be growing. How is it growing if you're not using it? How's it growing if you're not using it? You're not going to use it. Faith is practically impossible to use without prayer. Realize that? The believer that don't pray ain't using no faith. It ain't going to happen. The believer that's not in the word is not using any faith because faith cometh from the word. I'm not intending to scare you. Man, here, right? you. Is you scared? No. Is you scared? Thank you, then Lord. watch this. If you're scared, you know what you need to do? Come back to church. Come, back to church. <laughs> Come to church more. Glory be to God. If you're coming to church, take more of the church home with you. Yeah, that's good. Thank you, Lord. You know, me and Chelsea and I, Chelsea and I, we talk about this in our house as pastors. And we talk about, we joke about it. But the importance of needing to, in our lives, Chelsea and I, we have to be healed by time Sunday, Monday comes back around. You know, it's, and it's sobering. Doesn't matter what happens during the week. We know we have to always get patched back up and get patched back up quickly. All leaders need to do that. And you know why we do it? You know how we do it? Is we stay connected. 
Jesus said, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. You've got, he said, but if you don't abide in me, you cannot bear any what? Fruit. That fruit in that text is prayer fruit. Your prayers are not answered. Your needs are not met. And what I, I don't want you to be in a place to where you're just coming to church and not getting any results at home. You know, you should be concerned if you go extended, long, long periods of time and miracles are not happening to you because miracles are supposed to be on purpose in your life. Yeah. You're supposed to be taking territory every time you turn around. If I haven't captured it yet, I'm going after it. Yeah, that's good. Man. You're not supposed to be just existing. Glory be to God. Right. Why you need? To, why are you not excited about life? Where is your excitement? Where is your joy? Where is your peace? Are you expecting good things? Do you have a reason to shout? Amen. Do you have a reason to dance? Amen. The goodness of God belongs to you. These things belong to you. Cooperate with it. Make a decision tonight and say, I will not be destroyed. Because I won't neglect so great a salvation. Glory be to God. The word is going to work for me. You know why? Because I'm going to abide in the vine. I'm not going to be okay. With neglecting. And trying to save and preserve my own life. I am determined to live supernaturally. Yeah. What do you think about that? I agree. Period. How does that make you feel? Cut the camera for a second for me. Glory be to God.